Well, greetings and uh, welcome today to Pastors Pondering. Today's gonna be a little bit different. I, um, I, I don't necessarily go on to Facebook a real lot, but I do. And I know that some of you are Facebook friends of mine and I appreciate that. I do kind of follow along. So um, if you're posting things once in a while, I'll see that. Today I'm gonna read something directly from Facebook. I've never done that before, at least in the pastor's pondering. And I did repost this. So if you're following me, and I, and I post very little, but I did repost this simply because I thought it was, well, honestly, quite profound. And it had some points about life. It's written by a man named Mark Schneider, uh, spelled differently. It's actually S-N-Y-D-E-R, but I have a, a second cousin who I haven't seen for 30, 40 years by the name of Mark Schneider. So if Mark, you're out there, I'd love to be in contact with you sometime. Uh, but anyway, uh, this was on the TV newspaper web and uh, Mark Schneider is the author of this. And it's simply entitled, uh, Some Advice for Those Over 65. But the truth is, I don't think it matters much if you're over 65 or much, much younger. I really found this to be of interest and I think it's really good advice. And so, again, I've never shared a pastor's pondering in quite the same way, but I'm gonna just simply read through the 20 points that he made, and I think there's some very good life lessons in this, so uh, listen up, and um, hopefully we can all learn something together. Number one, it's time to use the money you saved up. Use it and enjoy it. Don't just keep it for those who may have no notion of the sacrifices you made to get it. Remember, there is nothing more dangerous than a son or daughter-in-law with big ideas for your hard-earned capital. Warning, this is also a bad time for investments, even if it seems wonderful or foolproof. The only, they only bring problems and worries. This is a time for you to enjoy some peace and quiet already some good advice I do believe number two stop worrying about the financial situation of your children and grandchildren and don't feel bad spending your money on yourself you've taken care of them for many years and you taught them that what they could do you gave them an education food shelter and support the responsibility is now theirs to earn their own money and uh, honestly, all of my kids make more money than I do, so I understand that one. And number three, keep a healthy lifestyle without great physical effort. Do moderate exercise, like walking every day. Eat well, get your sleep. It's easy to become sick, and it gets harder to remain healthy. That is why you need to keep yourself in good shape and be aware of your medical and physical needs. Keep in touch with your doctor, do tests when you're feeling well, and stay informed. And by the way, I'm a big advocate for colonostomies. Just do it, do not put it off. Colon cancer is the number two form of cancer killers here in the United States, so do it. And that's for anybody 45 and over, by the way. Number four, always buy the best the most beautiful items for your significant other. The key goal is to enjoy your money with your partner. One day, one of you will miss the other, and the money will not provide any comfort then, so enjoy it together. Number five, don't stress over the little things, like paying a little extra on a price quote. You've already overcome so much in your life. You have good memories and bad ones. But the important thing is the present. Don't let the past drag you down and don't let the future frighten you. Feel good in the now. And that's so important for us to remember. Feel good in the now. Every day is a special day that God gives you. Use it to the maximum. Small issues will soon be forgotten. And there's so much truth in that. Number six, regardless of your age, Always keep love alive. Love your partner, love your life, love your family, love your neighbor, and remember, a man is not old as long as he has intelligence and affection. Number seven, 
Be proud, both inside and out. Don't stop going to the hair salon or the barber. Do your nails, go to the dermatologist, go to the dentist, keep your perfumes and creams well stocked. When you are well maintained on the outside, it seeps in, making you feel proud and strong. And I just bought myself a new bottle of polo yesterday. So there you go. Number eight, don't lose sight of fashion trends for your age, but keep your own sense of style. There's nothing, nothing worse than an older person trying to wear the current fashion among youngsters. However, the 70s are coming back. Just kind of letting you know that. You developed your own sense of what looks good on you. Keep it and be proud of it. It's part of who you are. Number nine, always, this is important, always stay up to date. Read newspapers, watch the news, go online and read what people are saying. Make sure you have an active email account and try to use some of those social networks. You'll be surprised what old friends you'll meet. And again, that's where I found what I'm reading today. So go online. This is what this was a this was on a Facebook email that was sent to me. Uh, keeping in touch with what is going on and with the people you know is important in every age. Number ten. This is an important one. So listen up. Respect the younger generation and their opinions. They may not. Let me rephrase. They probably will not have the same ideas as you but they are the future and will take the world in their own direction. Give advice, not criticism, and try to remind them that yesterday's wisdom still applies today. And I'm gonna to add to that, know your history and learn from it. Number 11, never use the phrase, in my time. Well, okay, I've used that one a few times. Actually, there's a story about that where a little boy says, you know, or the grandpa says, you know, when I was your age, I had to walk three miles to school in the snowstorm every single day. And the little boy replied by saying, but grandpa, I didn't know it snowed in Florida. Another story. Never use the phrase in my time. Your time is now, as long as you're alive. You are part of this time. You may have been younger, but you are still you now. Have fun and enjoy life. Number 12, some people embrace their golden years while others become bitter and surly. Life is too short to waste your days on the ladder. Let me repeat that in case you didn't get it. Life is too short to waste the days on the ladder. Spend your times with positive, cheerful people. It will rub off on you and your days will seem so much better. Spending your time with bitter people will make you older and harder to be around. Number 13, do not surrender to the temptation of living with your children or grandchildren. If you have a financial choice, that is. Because sometimes, certainly you don't. Sure, being around family and friends sounds great, but we all need our privacy. They need theirs and you need yours. If you lost your partner, our deepens condolences. Then find a person to move in with you and help you out. Even then, do so only if you feel you really need the help or do not want to live alone. Number 14, don't abandon your hobbies. If you don't have any, make new ones. You can travel, hike, cook, read, dance. You can adopt a cat or a dog. You can grow a garden. You can learn to play cards, checkers, chess, dominoes, golf, whatever. You can paint, you can volunteer. And trust me, we need volunteers all over. Every organization, including the church, needs volunteers. Volunteer, please, or just collect certain items for donations. Find something you like and spend some real time having fun with it. Number 15, even if you don't feel like it, try to accept invitations. Baptisms, graduations, birthdays, weddings, conferences, try to go. Get out of the house. 
meet people you haven't seen in a while, experience new things, or maybe some old thing. But don't get upset if you're not invited. Some events are limited by resources and not everyone can be hosted. The important thing is to leave the house from time to time. Go to a museum, go to a walk, go to a round mountain, walk through a field, just get out there. Number 16, be a conversationalist. This is important. Talk less and listen more. Some people go on and on about the past, not caring if their listeners are really interested. That's a great way of reducing their desire to speak with you. Listen first and answer questions, but don't go off into long stories unless asked to. Speak in courteous tones and try not to complain. Oh, I'm gonna repeat that one. Try not to complain and criticize too much unless you really need the help. Try to accept situations as they are. Everyone is going through something and people have a low tolerance for hearing complaints. Always find something good to say as well. I was always taught as a kid, if you can't say something good about somebody, don't say it at all. Good advice. Number 17. Well, this one I'm not so pleased about, but this is part of reality. Pain and discomfort go hand in hand with getting older. Try not to dwell on them, but accept them as a part of the cycle of life that we're all going through. Try to minimize them in your mind. They are not who you are. They are something that life adds to you. If they become your entire focus, you lose sight of the person that you used to be. Number 18. If you've been offended by someone, forgive them. If you've offended somebody, apologize. Don't drag around resentment with you. It only serves to make you sad and bitter. It doesn't matter who was right. Someone once said holding a grudge is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. Don't take the poison. Forgive, forget, and move on with your life. And I've talked about that in sermon, after sermon, after sermon. So many times I meet with families with funerals, planning funerals, and so-and-so is mad at some other member of the family. They don't even remember why anymore. It happened 30, 40 years ago, but they're still mad. Boy, that was worth hanging on to, huh? Number 19, if you have a strong belief, savor it but don't waste your time trying to convince others. They will make their own choices no matter what you tell them, and it only brings you frustration. But live out your faith and set a good example. Live true to your beliefs and let that memory sway them. There's an old song in our hymnal. They will know we are Christians by our love. Show that love and use that love to teach. Number 20, we're getting down there. Number 20, laugh and laugh a lot. Laugh at everything. Remember, you are one of the lucky ones. You manage to have a life, a long life. And there is certainly truth in this, isn't there? Many never get to this age. They never get to experience a full life, but you did. So what's not to laugh about? Find the humor in your situation. And 21, take no notice of what others are saying about you and even less notice of what they might be thinking. They'll do it anyway. And you should have pride in yourself and what you've achieved. Let them talk about you, don't worry. They have no idea about your history, your memories, and the life that you've lived so far. There's still much to be written, so get busy writing and don't waste time thinking about what others might think. Now is the time to be at rest, at peace, and as happy as you can be. See, I told you that 
there's some good things on Facebook every once in a while, and I think this one was truly worth sharing. So Mark Snyder, who wrote this, thank you for making that available. And his last piece of advice, his advice I'd give you, tongue in cheek, but advice I'll give you anyway, life is too short to drink bad wine and warm beer. So go for it. And with that, I do invite you to share with me your prayer. Almighty God, life is filled with ups and downs, with things we cannot even begin to anticipate. And though we may plan and think about the future, those plans can go sideways, bang, in a heartbeat. Help us always to be accepting. Help us always to be loving. And most importantly, God, help us to know that you are always walking beside us, side by side, carrying us at times, no matter what. Thank you for the life, le life lessons we've learned, and may we pass them on to others. Amen. And I pray that these life lessons I shared with you today um, might take some special meaning in your heart. Thanks for sharing with me today. That's quite a bunch of stuff to ponder, isn't it? Thanks. See you later. I'm in.